you say something, you say no. All right, glad to have you back and uh, welcome to New Talk if you just tuned in. This is today's our open day and we're about to begin our discussions on open day. Uh, at the beginning of the program, I intimated to you that the topics up for discussion today is politics and the throne or politics and monarchy uh, with reference to the dethronement of Lamido Sanusi, uh, the former Emir of Kano State, who has been ably replaced. Uh, the politics therein, the legality also involved and also the coronavirus outbreak all across the world uh, what is happening is there uh, is there a chance that this coronavirus will be contained sooner than we expect uh, who and who are those that have been infected uh, by this coronavirus Oli earlier also mentioned that the canadian prime minister justin trudeau and his wife sophie are in 14-day isolation after the wife tested positive to the coronavirus and the Brazilian president, Jair Bolos, uh, Bolsonaro, is also being tested after one of his aides tested positive. Arsenal manager Mikel Arteta, sadly so, is down with um, the coronavirus. And apparently Arsenal team players are also going to be quarantined for 14 days to find out if any of them had a close contact with the Arsenal manager. A Chelsea player, Callum Hudson or Doy, is also or has also caught the coronavirus disease or whatever it is. You know, it's really very sad that Chelsea might also uh, be quarantined. Chelsea players might also be quarantined, you know, because of coronavirus. Will the Champions League, the Europa, the the EPL, be suspended? We saw on the front page of the Nation Sports and Life uh, that some matches might be suspended. But with this development, we don't know if this weekend we'll see some. Uh, matches been played by you know football lovers singapore is going to deny entry to some travelers coming into singapore canada has suspended all visas uh, for those planning to come into canada how many other countries are going to tow this line uh, how how much more is the world going to be grounded for coronavirus the world is grounded for coronavirus this is very sad indeed but um, to discuss this with us we have uh, Kola Adebayo. Kola is a professor of international and rural development, Federal University of Agriculture, Belkota. Good morning and welcome to News Hub, Prof. Good morning. <sighs> I think the human angle story that concerns the generality of human beings is the coronavirus. Let's begin with coronavirus. Nigeria, I think we're lucky or blessed. <laughs> People will say it's a plague affecting the world and, and the favor of, of the Lord or the Most High or the Creator are those that are not affected. But whether or not that is the case, coronavirus has come into Nigeria. The index case, uh, we saw some people being quarantined, a family of four and their teacher quarantined uh, two days ago, if I'm not mistaken. And some other cases that we've seen that had contact with the index case being quarantined. How much do you think the government is doing or has done in uh, you know, preaching the gospel of uh, self-quarantining or you know, personal hygiene? I, I think we, this time around, we should give it to the government of Nigeria, uh, particularly uh, the uh, Commissioner of Health in Lagos and Ogun State. I think they've handled uh, this particular in this case very professionally, and that has helped us uh, up till this moment in the containment procedure and in the identification of the people who have been in contact with our index case and tracing those who have been dispersed after their initial contact. I think this is very helpful and it needs to be noted that there are some guys in this country who have done the right thing at the right time and has uh, put us on a, uh, on a good starting point, having been in contact with uh, the virus. Uh, but going forward, I think we ought to do more. Now we have to be preemptive because the, the nature of a virus disease, and I'm amazed uh, at the way people talk about this, the nature of a virus disease is that you usually don't cure virus diseases. They last their time, and then you get well, and then get some immunity thereafter. And not to confuse matters, this is not the first case of a coronavirus problem in the world. Yeah. Uh, way back in 2002, 
uh, there was a SARS, SARS. virus, there yeah, was MERS in 2012. So we have had cases before. But, but this is a new strain. This is a new strain. And funny enough, is, um, even though it happened, it started in China, in Wuhan, <coughs> I think the internationalization of it actually now have Italy as the epicenter. And almost everyone in Europe or Africa or America who had contacted this uh, disease at this moment have had some kind of contact with Italy. And that tells us a lot. But this is a, this is a disease that essentially you could prevent by basic hygiene. And lo and behold, it's plaguing our world. It, it, it goes to tell us a lot about how we've neglected simple hygiene. And of course, um, as it's happening, it also tells us some of our social norms that we ought to revise. Who says it's compulsory that we should shake, uh, shake hands when we greet each other? Who says we should hug as a form of greeting? Uh, maybe this is time we need to start calling ourselves together as human race and say, well, maybe a bow will just do. You know, what is called social distancing. Uh, let's keep some space. Because this is disease that spreads when you have a lot of people gathered in the same space. Uh, it's basically something that has to do with coughing and sneezing. And you can spread germs easily by coughing and sneezing when you are in a compacted in a closed environment, which of course, um, which of course is now what a lot of people are reacting to by canceling shows, by um, stopping opportunities for people to Got congregate in, in a place, which is why schools have been closed in some country, which is why um, events that will bring a large number of people into physical contact in a uh, small uh, place is being uh, <coughs> removed. So yes, we have, uh, as the World Health Organization call it, a pandemic on our hand. Uh, the solution is not that difficult, but it's better prevented yeah. than cured. You know, um, the, U the US also is to stop flights coming into US, especially from Europe. Uh, but they said, uh, I think, UK is exempted from because that flight. It's an isolated island. Uh, now, it will, it will maybe, maybe not shock you, but we know that a lot of travelers travel to America and Asian countries, and uh, these two countries have recorded quite a number of um, uh, cases or casualties, as the case may be. We have seen it affect the price of oil. We've seen the coronavirus affect businesses, sports, you know, and all that. Uh, how, how do you think, or where do you think this is going to end? At what point do you think that uh, the world will get back to its feet? Because right now it feels scary. A UK store, uh, in a certain, I think in London, one of the stores in London, was virtually empty. The toilet papers, the sanitary towels, everything was just, the, the stores were just cleared off. So at what point do you think we're going to get back on our feet? I think we, we have to, and the press would help in this matter, to reduce the element of panic. And I think we are going into a state of panic. It's not needed at this stage. We need a cool, <coughs> calm, and calculated approach to address this menace. First, is all our international borders. We need to begin to get our acts right. Mutala Mohammed Airport is not getting it right at the moment. The arrival hall is still a large congregation of people in a small place. That is not, that's not a good way to go about it. So the public health unit in that airport need to get their acts right. Almost all our local airports, because a lot of people land on an international flight and then go to the next um, uh, local flight to go yes. anywhere else yeah. in the country. So we need to get that right. I think we are not getting that right at the moment. People need to be monitored because it takes about five to six days before the symptoms begin to show. And within that period, uh, if you are a really mobile person, you could spread uh, this virus quite uh, over a large uh, area of land particularly when you continue to shake and hug people. And you know, of course, if you just arrive from an international trip, quite a large number of people will want to shake hand or hug yes. or get close. And this is how this, this is spread. So we need to um, put our house together in that order. Um, we need to also get, you know, there are screening machines that are infrared based. 
you don't need to touch people to monitor their temperature. You don't need to uh, get too close uh, to, and you can, there are also facilities that enable you to monitor a crowd. So you can see on a wide screen uh, when a crowd is approaching who has a higher temperature than the average of the room. And you can isolate those rather than all these crowding people into a room for the likes of one hour. In that one hour, even people who had no... This, and people also seem to think that once you have your nose guard, you are okay. You are not. No, oh, really? Why do you say that? Yeah, because you have a nose guard, you touch your nose guard, and you touch other parts of your body, which is not covered. Okay. So social distancing at this moment would help us more than that in terms of pre uh, prevention. So a nose guard is only to the extent that you don't have somebody sneezing directly into your nose or into your mouth. Or if you're the one sneezing, you don't have to pass it on or to Or if you're the one sneezing, you. we end up touching our nose, our faces all the time and touching other parts of our body that are not close. And this is a virus. This is an RNA particle that can travel into our bloodstream very easily and then establish itself. And then it takes another five to six days before it manifests into symptoms. That's when we begin to identify people. And no, I said we need a, a calm and calculated strategy. So all of a sudden, you begin to feel high temperature. You begin to cough or sneeze. There is a dryness in your throat. Okay. The first thing, the first most responsible thing to do is to isolate yourself from your immediate environment, environment your immediate friends and family, people who normally will rally around you and disclose. Look, I'm beginning to have some dryness in my throat, so you guys give me space. That's the first thing. The next thing is you try to then document in the last five to six days, who have I been in contact with? But don't you think that it might be quite difficult here in, the part, in this part of the world where people would just present themselves as someone having the symptoms of coronavirus? We saw the case where the people who were on the same flight with the index case That's refused to submit to themselves show or show up you yeah. know, to the authorities. And then, you know, as compared to other countries, people are coming out to say, we saw an actor and his wife, yeah, you know, they come out to say that we have this coronavirus. We've heard we footballers say the same thing. The Canadian Prime Minister, Minister has said the same thing. But for Africa, for Nigerians, do you think we can actually come out to say, guys, I have coronavirus, stay away from me. Let me monitor myself for 14 days. I, I, I think we need to change the narrative. Uh, around the year, you don't say, guys, I have the coronavirus. And actually, we have very little means of saying that. All we could say is, look, I'm suspecting that I'm having some dryness in my throat. I have been coughing a little. Guys, give me space. Now, that's a different narrative than when you say, guys, I have coronavirus. You, it might just be a cold. Or in the case cough. of the Canadian president, you know, his wife tested positive. Yeah. And then he decided, and he decided to, to isolate, isolate himself, himself, having been in contact with the wife. Do you think we are bold enough to do similar things? You know, we don't have to come out to say we have coronavirus. Yeah. But can we say that, okay, because I think I have I'm contact being with in this contact person, with, I want to I isolate, myself. isolate myself. I think we have quite a large population that will do that now in the country. Um, we, we tend to underrate ourselves a lot in this part of the world. We are no different from other parts of the world in terms of how human beings will behave. I've seen, I've seen videos of people in China that had to be dragged into a quarantine session. So, so, so it's not just Nigerians or Africans who are afraid of disclosure. And I think that happens from the perception of what would happen if you disclose. And in those countries where people disclose, it's also their perception of what would happen if they disclose. Where your perception of what would happen if you disclose is that of, oh, I'm going to be taken care of. You will disclose. But if your perception is, if I disclose, they will treat me like a criminal. Like a leper. Like a leper. You know, I'll be taken so away from the society. Rather keep see, quiet. Keep quiet. Now, we need to change that narrative. And this is part of this media awareness that you guys are doing at Silverboard. We need to let people know that. Okay. Even if you don't trust the authorities, at least save your immediate circle. Because this is a social networking disease. Everyone you personally love and care for might catch the disease. So for that reason, disclosure, at least at that level, is the first most rational thing to do. And then 
we use this opportunity to also then call for support from those immediate circles to say, okay, where's our nearest healthcare facility to have this checked, okay? And I think this is where we then need our authorities to get their acts together. You don't need to move a case at this moment from Ewekoro in Ogun State to Lagos to test for coronavirus. By now, almost all our general hospitals should have a center for that testing. Even America is not doing very well with that at the moment, which is responsible for the spread. Actually, there were a lot of deniers, even exactly. in America. Ah, oh, it couldn't happen. It's common cold. It's common flu. And it's only now that it just strikes them that, woo, we now have it, that they are panicky and they are taking such rash decisions that shouldn't have been taken if those preventive measures have been put in place in the first instance. You recall that when we had the Ebola virus, there were quite a number of um, resources dis um, uh, disposed to getting monitoring screen, um, infrared thermometers to check people from about a, 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 distance. A, a distance. Where are those things? We should put them out now and get more. And maybe the lessons from this is going forward, we need to install some of these things as some a matter of, of routine. Because you, you seem to see that every five to 10 years, there's one trouble or the other. And as I said, with viruses, it's not really about cure. It's about prevention. Once you have it, it passes its time and then goes out. Okay, now let's touch on the second topic about uh, uh, Sanusi Lamido, Sanusi, the deposed emir. Uh, some would say he was barred or he was, you know, uh, told to go in exile, so to speak, in Nasarawa State. Uh, but basically, the, the, what I call it an institution of traditional rulers, do you think they still have the importance that they once had in the, you know, in the early years of our great, great grandfathers? <laughs> okay. Uh, so you, we, we are going to go through history now. And you see that before the arrival of the colonials, these were next to the gods, the traditional rulers. Um, whatever they say is law. And they are respected and revered some demystification came in with colonial rulership to say that, okay, you can remove a king and banish him or send him to England to go and stand trial. And then after independence, our political leaders inherited those kind of powers and used it to political advantages. I think what we are seeing at play with the removal of uh, Emir uh, Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi, is simple power play, okay? And I think it's also a reflection of the times that the institution of traditional leadership have been watered down and eroded to the extent that people who ordinarily should respect traditional authorities are now above traditional authorities and using those to political advantages. Um, I'm not a legal practitioner, so I'm not going to speak on the legality or otherwise of it. But I think from a moral and humanist perspective, what lessons are we teaching our children? That if someone's opinion differs from yours, and you have some social power over and above them, you impose it mercilessly. I think that's a wrong lesson to be teaching. And unfortunately, um, if you cannot tolerate opposition, today's world will not treat you kindly. And I think uh, Governor Ganduje has just wittingly or unwittingly put himself in that list of people who, who might not be treated kindly in history. Whatever offense uh, Sanudo, uh, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi may have committed, according to them, the procedure, the process of the treatment is too faulty, even from a street perspective, uh, to hold any water in history. And I think uh, the entire traditional authority needs to revisit themselves and see how they've sold out 
their inheritance to, on the altar of um, political favors. All right. Let us, it's time for us to open our phone line. So I invite all our viewers to call in as numbers are showing on your screen. I will be showing on your screen very shortly. I do call in and talk to what's concerning the coronavirus spread across the world. Uh, how you think the government can do better for Lagos or for Nigeria, any part of Nigeria you are in, and what you know, solutions you, you think are preferred for the world so that we can stop uh, the spread of the coronavirus. And also about the deposed Emir uh, Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi. So do call us and remember that when you call, kindly, kindly, please turn down the volume on your TV set and talk to what is in your phone. Don't listen with your TV set or listen with your phone. Thank you most kindly. And for those of you who might not be able to call in, kindly go to our social media platform on Twitter at SilverbedN24, at SilverbedN24, hashtag News Hub, and uh, drop your comments there. I would like to read all the comments for all to hear. Uh, so still staying with the, uh, the post Emir. Uh, his lawyers have said they are going to take this to court. In fact, I think the hearing begins today. Uh, whether they are going because of the banishment or they're going because of the dethronement. Some school of thought have it that um, being banished is an archaic, is an archaic thing. You know, those were where uh, the t times of a long, long time ago before uh, the British, you know, colonized Nigeria. But if you look at it, there has been precedents where other traditional rulers have been dethroned and banished from the, the, the traditional place they were in. So why do you think this should be an exemption of, from what we have been practicing before now? I, I, I don't think... But before you respond, please, let's okay. take uh, our first caller, Yahaya, calling in from Lagos. Yahaya, good morning and welcome to News Hub. Please go uh, ahead and uh, comments. Good morning. Um, Great. Uh, actually, my, my own uh, comment uh, is just that um, this uh, issue of uh, coronavirus, a lot okay. of... Um, Lot, lot, lots of uh, uh, articles and lots of um, uh, comments have been passed. Uh, for example, we're told that um, uh, Africans are not prone to, to, the, to the virus. So I, don't, I don't know how, how, how true that is. So I don't know if uh, Professor uh, Adebayo can share a bit light on that. You know, because yesterday I, I was on social media, I saw uh, for you not to have um, the virus, it should be taking alcohol and other people. Prof, please just share a bit of uh, my prof. Just share a bit of uh, that news. If actually it's true that the alcohol can uh, can reduce the spread of, of the virus. Thanks so much. All right, thank you, Yahya. Let me let you respond first before I make my comment on that. Call. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Yahya, for that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. I think this is one of the uh, things that we need to uh, check ourselves on. I, I don't think it's been scientifically proved that African bloods are immune to coronavirus. It, is, it might be possible, but I don't think I've seen any scientific paper or scientific evidence that that were true. Okay? Now, having said that, um, the, your question about alcohol, I think other than the um, social use of alcohol, alcohol is a disinfectant. And many um, disinfectants have some level of alcohol in them. You could use it uh, in the absence of soap uh, to uh, immediately clean your hand after you've touched a public contact space. But it's not as effective as soap and water uh, in terms of cleaning after uh, one has touched a public space. And when I say public space, uh, you've worked on a, uh, on a stairwell and held on onto the rail. The rail. Uh, you've uh, opened the door to a toilet or to a public place, uh, even at home, uh, quite a large so number of jams. Let me, please hold your thoughts there. Let's listen to Solomon. Maybe he has the same okay. line of thoughts. Hello, Solomon, you're connected now. Please go ahead with your question or comments. Hello, good morning. Hello, Solomon. Hello. Great. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Solomon. I want to talk about the coronavirus. All right, please go ahead. Okay. Then, that, well, we heard that the African cannot contact this <laughs> coronavirus, coronavirus disease. And I was very surprised that the data said that everybody can easily contact it, easily, 
no need now all the rest. Another thing about alcoholic, that those that consume alcoholic are the most dangerous people to contact this disease. But why can't our government now come to restrict the alcoholic sellers? To the owner? If the alcohol is the problem that we cause people to contact this coronavirus, then let people be free from the disease. But we're seeking the alcoholic selling. Thank you. Thank you, Solomon. Uh, well, I got just a bit of what you said, but let's let our guests react to that. Okay, uh, Solomon still is still along Yaya with uh, Yaya's uh, position. I, I, I think this is a virus disease. I will not take the risks. Even if somebody were to tell me, oh, you're an African, you won't cash it. Why do I want to take, to take the risk? So I would think, yes, um, the, the, uh, the indication is that Africans have not been cashing it yet. But don't expose Africans to it. So if you've not caught it, then don't let us catch it. Prevention, they say, yes. is better than cure. Um, so that's the way I will go. But going back to the issue of alcohol, when they say use alcohol, in this case, it doesn't mean drink it. It means use it to clean or surfaces, surfaces your hands. Your hands anyway, so uh, we should distinguish that because I, I think I read somewhere that somebody died of alcohol overdose uh, because he thought the more alcohol in his blood, the, the less the chances, chances of, getting, of it. getting it. So please don't do that. All right, we have another caller from Delta State. You connector, please go ahead. Good morning and welcome to the program. Hello. Please go ahead. Hello. We can hear you. Yes, please go ahead. Is, I, I want to speak on uh, MS Anusi. Great. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, what has happened to Sanusi should be of concern to all Nigerians, particularly the traditional institution. You know, the way the government is violating human rights should be of concern. Today it is Dasuki. Tomorrow it may be another person. So we need to tackle what is happening. And I believe that at the end of the day, that, that uh, Sanusi will come out clean. You know, so that's my contribution. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Dan, for that. Um, but Andy is standing by from Benin. Andy, you're now connected. Let's hear your point of view. Hello, Andy. Yeah, my name is Andy. I'm calling from Benin City regarding the coronavirus. All right, please go ahead. Yeah, I just came in from the UK, and uh, I discovered that uh, the, the sensitization of this coronavirus to the public is not pronounced here in, in Nigeria. The people are really not aware of the effect of this coronavirus. The way the government is handling it, they're not handling it properly, educating the, 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 the public. If I came into the airport, I go into the town, and nobody seems to be aware of what is going on. So the government had to do a whole lot of uh, 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 sensitization to, to educate the public the effect and the, the, the what coronavirus is all about. Because I go by in town, just say, ah, no, that one, no, no, not be our own, it not be our portion. We don't know if it doesn't can affect us. We are black, we have strong uh, immune system. It's not so. Coronavirus is, is a virus that goes about irrespective of whether your, your blood system is strong or not. But I will implore the, 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 the government to do more about sensitization, making the people to know the effect, making people to know that it can kill. Because I enter into a hotel, they don't even have this uh, sanitizer, they don't have nothing, not, nothing put in place. Apart from the airport, when I go through the airport, they just uh, screen you and that's it, they pass you on. I told the people at the hotel, they, there is no, uh, no, nothing is put in place here. They say, oh God, they don't do you for hotel, I mean for hospital. Uh, I mean, they don't, they don't check you for airport. So we don't need, we don't, you know, you know, consign us. I said, no, you have to put, at least put sanitizer at the reception so that people come in can wash their hands and know. So right. all I'm talking about is the government is not doing enough to educate the people, the agents, uh, 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 
the, what uh, uh, coronavirus is all about. Like in Britain, uh, everywhere you go, even my GP now, I can't go to GP, I have to do it. All right, thank you so much, Andy. Thank you so much, Andy. Uh, well, let's take another caller, Emmanuel, calling in from Akwa Ibom State. Emmanuel, you connect her, please go ahead. Hello, Emmanuel. Well, let's take another call. Okay. 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 I'm sorry we had to call you off. Please, when you call in, turn down the volume on your TV set and listen to us with your phone and not from your TV set. All right, so um, the caller before um, Andy, that's Dan, I think, he talked about uh, the, yeah, the, the, the sacredness, so to speak, of traditional of institutions and how you know, we should be of concern to all Nigerians. Yes, uh, you see, the, the, the traditional uh, in institution, I, I think, is part of our history and culture. And I know from my readings that if you desecrate a people's history, if you remove their culture, then you entirely enslave them. Unfortunately, I think this is an inside job now. We are killing our own history. And I think that's, that's a sad thing uh, to allow to happen. Can we please hold your thoughts again? We have another caller calling you from Plateau State, Onoja. Onoja, welcome to the program. Please go ahead with your comments. Yeah. Yeah, Can you turn down the volume on your TV set, please? There is a, there is a feedback. All right, man. All right. All right, money. Are you getting me? Okay, please go ahead. Hello. Please go ahead, Onoja. Okay, I want to speak about the coronavirus. All right. Coronavirus. Go ahead, go ahead. All right. What those people are saying, what the government are saying about it, is it the alcohol preventing the or what? I don't understand. Okay. Um, just stay tuned so that you get, you get to understand. The professor in our studio just um, uh, talked huh? about it. Uh, don't, basically, don't, alcohol don't, is don't. not that you take it. If you drink alcohol, you might die of um, too much alcohol in your system. Basically, alcohol is, if you don't have sanitizers, you can use alcohol to clean the surfaces in your house or offices, uh, not in large quantities, of course, just maybe uh, uh, some drops of alcohol to clean surfaces and your hands, and not about drinking alcohol. That would not prevent you or protect you from the coronavirus. But we are preaching sanitizers. Sanitizers are expensive or out of markets. So if you have alcohol in your homes, you could use a bit of alcohol to clean surfaces, your hands, and, and that of your, your children or your loved ones also. Uh, thank you so much for that, um, uh, that comment. Let's take another caller, uh, Uwan Ganga from Port Harcourt. Okay, we, we love the call. Well, let's go back to what Andy said. Andy said the awareness rate is low. Uh, he came in from UK and then uh, he saw nothing or little or nothing done at the airport. He got back to Benin apparently and then no one seems to know about coronavirus. Is it that the government isn't doing enough? Because right from here, from Lagos, I think that um, the, the word of coronavirus is loud. I don't know how loud it is. But in other states and cities, do you think that this message also reaches them? Is it the fault of the government or the fault of individuals? You know, not paying attention to what the government is saying. Well, you 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 probably know what it, what they talk about uh, uh, selective uh, message reception. Uh, but I, I think that we ought to do more. I agree entirely with Andy that we ought to do more in terms of making people more aware, more conscious. Particularly as you go into the interland, into the rural areas, into uh, the more remote states, away from the borders from the international borders uh, of the country all uh, right please again <laughs> please hold, just hold your thoughts please yeah, okay. let's listen to chima calling from river state chima you're connected thanks for holding on the line, okay, I'm still on the line. <laughs> yes thank you for holding on the line please go ahead now okay i want to talk about this coronavirus all right please go ahead Please turn down the volume of your TV set, please, Chima. Turn it down completely. Okay, I want to talk about this coronavirus. Yeah, the pattern we are using this coronavirus compared to the time is already turned. Is already turned. No, Chima, there is a terrible feedback you are giving us because your TV is still on a high level. 
Can you turn it down completely and call us back? We'd love to hear what you have to say. And to other callers who are planning to call in, please turn down the volume on your TV set and talk to us. Don't listen from your TV set. We know you like to hear your voice, but don't worry. You can record it if you have the, the means to do that. But please turn it down completely. Okay, we're still talking about the fact the awareness rate. Oh, yeah. before then, Kende is on the line. Kende, thanks for joining us on the program. Please go ahead with your comments, questions. Good morning. Good morning, Kende. Yeah, good morning. Uh, yeah. Um, I think uh, the, the prof, by, you know, talking there, is really making sense. I've talked about the coronavirus. It's, yeah, dealt with it. You know, basically, what you have said about uh, awareness and all that is so long. Because prevention, they say, is better than kill. Initially, I was even thinking, I would have said um, alcohol is, uh, you know, takes care of uh, coronavirus. I was going to ask them in the real to just open all the wine shops, all the spirit <laughs> shops, and let everybody start <laughs> drinking themselves. But good thing I just, you know, share some light on that now that it is, it is best that you didn't have uh, sanitizer around. You could quickly use uh, alcohol, because alcohol is pills, just like sanitizer, too, you know. So I think uh, they have, you know, really dealt with that. I'm talking about the determinant of uh, Sanus Pilamido. You see, um, I must tell you that light and darkness cannot really, you know, stay the same place. We all, we all, we all have heard about uh, who the who governed the Ambuja is, and in fact, who is made now as Gandola. You know, it talks about how, how, uh, how the kind of person that is. And with the kind of person that Sanus is, you know, if somebody who is very clever, who talks, who, who says it as it is, in fact, and in that, in, in that kind of person, in that kind of place, the governor would not be comfortable. I'm not surprised about that. Talking about the, 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 the banishment, you see, uh, it, 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 it mentioned that uh, the, the, the SNL, I think, Kanuti now, is trying to, you know, rubbish the typical emirate law and all that. But the Emirate law is not above the Constitution. All right. Okay, you cannot just restrict somebody's movement somewhere. I mean, it's it, it, it encroaches All right, Kendi. In the fundamental human right. Kendi, thank you so much. We appreciate your comments, right? But please, when we call in, let's make our comments really short so that we can accommodate as many callers as possible. We have another caller, David, calling in from River State. David, thanks for waiting. Oh, apparently we lost David. We apologize, David. Please do us well to call back. Uh, we'd love to hear your take on our topic or topics uh, up for discussion today. Uh, we we're still on the case of um, the awareness rates. Uh, how well do you think we have done? Because I'm wondering what the NOA, the National Orientation Agency, is doing. You know, we've been always talking about NOA, NOA. Are they still alive? Do, they, do we still have an agency uh, called NOA? I, I think we still do. Um, you're right. This is the kind of time we should see them at work but you see them more towards a political election period when they start uh, raising the consciousness of people in terms of uh, going to register to vote uh, maintaining their cards and um, so on and so forth but actually this is one of the reasons they are established to make people more aware of issues that are of importance to our nation in addition to those we also have a community health unit in almost all our um, ministries of health. And I think this is also their primary assignment to make people more aware. All right. Let's listen to Reverend Nadeumi calling in from Kwara State. Uh, you're connected, Reverend. Please go ahead. I just want to speak on the banishment of the deposed MR. All right. Go ahead, please. I, I, I just believe that the condition of, of our country should be fully uh, respected. You were fine, the, the MA has been disposed, but uh, taking him far away to Nasarawa has denied him of his fundamental human rights. And I think our political elite should be able to uh, follow into the, I mean, to detail the concern of our country. Because as a grown up, if we continue to violate our constitution, then we don't have a country. So, Sanusi should be allowed, the, the, the post area should be allowed to live wherever he chooses to live in the country. Why detain him far away in Nasarawa? 
I think I think our our leader should, and I, I believe the president should be able to speak because he is the one who custodian of our constitution, and if the, the, the right of the citizen has been violated, the, the, the president and those in authority should be able to rise to the occasion. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Reverend Adeumi. I guess you'll be our last caller for today. Thanks to all our callers. Uh, let's allow our guests to you know, comment on some of these um, issues that have been raised via phone callers. So uh, f let's begin from the last caller, talking about the deposed emir. Uh, the government should also come in to, you know, to solve the issues. Uh, well, I, I think there are two ways at the moment to proceed. One is the legal route, uh, which uh, you referenced uh, that... Um, Sanusi had, he might go to court. And I think I've had some of uh, our lawyers make the legal opinion that he could actually fight this in court uh, if he chooses to. Uh, and there are two elements. The one is the deposition, then one is the restriction of movement. Um, whether or not anybody has the right to restrict anyone else's movement without recourse to the uh, court of competent jurisdiction, I think that's another thing and in both legs uh, Shanusi is free uh, as a Nigerian to uh, pursue uh, this case forward uh, over and above Sanusi I think our traditional authorities this is a fine opportunity for them to come back together and say look who really should be the um, representative of the people and I think if we are going to uh, restructure our country in the, on the path of growth and development this is the kind of dialogue we should have openly, uh, without um, animosity, uh, without fear that someone would injure another unfairly just because of their expressed opinion on matters. On the coronavirus, I think we need to do more to enlighten our people. We need to do more to advocate that prevention is better than care, and that if you feel any sign of uh, dryness of the throat, high fever, or coughing and sneezing, please, at least within your immediate social environment, let them be aware so that everyone can begin to take stock of who they were in contact with in the last five to and six days. And then self-isolate. And then self-isolate, and then report if that opportunity is there. But as government, each of our state capitals, local government headquarters should have screening facilities as a matter of urgency. All right. Now, let me also add that the National Orientation Agency should be open about and try to get the message across to every Nigerian in different languages so that they can be aware of um, how devastating the coronavirus is as it is today. Uh, Ronaldo, a player, a very from, a popular player, has also uh, self-quarantined himself. So he tells you that it could happen to anyone, not just the popular people. Uh, the you know, people in the grassroots are also affected. And in fact, it will worsen the grassroots. If you don't know and you have it, it's going to spread like wildfire. Like the World Health Organization said, it's a pandemic. It's widespread all over the, the world. So we need to be very precautious, or very cautious in terms of our personal hygiene. But thank you so much, uh, Professor Tunde, sorry, uh, Professor Kola Adibayo. Uh, he's a professor of international and rural development from the Federal University of Agriculture, uh, Belkuta, that's in Ogun State. Thank you most kindly for your Thank time you. with us. Thank you very much. All right, we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk some sports with Blessing Wosu. Please stay with us. <laughs>